What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about an unmade Godzilla movie that I honestly had no idea was even a thing up until very recently. And it goes way back to the early days of the Heisei series too, which makes it kind of unique at that point in the monsters universe and lore to say the least. So get this, a long time ago, Toho actually held a contest for what they were going to call Godzilla 2 in the 1980s. The technical winner, I guess, would go on to be known as Shinichiro Kobayashi, who would write Godzilla vs. Biollante, which went on to become a pretty notable entry in the series, at least it is today. When it came out, it wasn't that big of a hit, but that's neither here nor there. But look guys, there were a couple of other guys that helped shape the future projects Toho would make, and they don't really get too much attention at all. All. One of them being Guy Tucker, who apparently wrote a script that was sent into Toho for a movie called Godzilla vs. Ankiron. Now, Ankiron never got made into an official monster in Godzilla's lineup of foes, but the way it's been described has been as a four-legged, spiky monster that looked an awful lot like what you would assume Anguirus would be in the Heisei series. Only the big difference with this guy would have been his connection to a psychic woman, which should sound extremely familiar to Godzilla fans that paid attention to the movies that were coming out in the 80s and 90s. The film was allegedly going to open with, get this, Godzilla attacking Hong Kong, only, quote, burning red hot and going into meltdown. Apparently, Ankiron was meant to fight a form of Godzilla that would be burning red hot, which is surprisingly similar to what we've seen later on in this series. And Ankiron's connection to this psychic woman was supposed to give her a kind of motivation that has been described as something akin to Iris involvement in Gamera 3, which isn't connected to the Godzilla movies. So it looks like from what I can tell, there exists a sort of major upset feeling after Guy Tucker saw some of these ideas included in the later Heisei movies, particularly Godzilla vs. Destroya, which had a burning red-hot Godzilla attack Hong Kong and... Yeah, that's a little too similar if you ask me. Now the monster in question sounds like it has some sort of link to Anguirus, but the psychic connection reminds me of Armadon from Primal Rage for some reason, uh, believe it or not. It's weird to see some of the concept material that pops up when Ankiron is discussed because I guess we will never really know what a finalized version would have looked like, especially a Toho suit, but I can also see how Godzilla falling into the volcano at the end of 1985 could have given an American fan the idea to incorporate an idea from Godzilla Raids again just based off of the abandoned Volcano Monsters project. Uh, but look, that's just me making connections myself. I have no idea if that was the intention from Guy Tucker or not at all. Like, it just makes sense to me personally. Anki Ron's connection with a Mickey Sagusa style character, by the way, that's so spot on. Like, I guess Godzilla would have risen out of the volcano from the last movie and been burning red hot attacking Hong Kong and looks like he even got frozen by the Japanese defense forces like what did wind up happening in Versus Destroya. And also, Ankiron is there with that psychic woman helping him along the way. It all sounds a little too similar to what Toho eventually made. And look, I think one of the big reasons I wanted to make this video, besides the fact that a lot of you guys didn't know about it, me included, is that it reminds me of the way Ray Harryhouse felt after seeing them make King Kong vs. Godzilla in 1962. Willis O'Brien uh, penned a, a story, and I think maybe even a draft script, uh, for King Kong vs. Frankenstein. Now, uh. he took that to RKO, and they introduced him to a producer. And that producer, without O'Brien's knowledge or consent, took that to what is classed in this particular book, A Century of Model Animation by Ray Harryhausen, took that to a Japanese film company. Now I can only imagine who that Japanese <laughs> film company is because it doesn't actually state it in the book. I mean, there's some similarities there to how they've kind of treated the material that got turned in. I gotta say, it's kind of wild to hear about some of this stuff as a fan. Now, Ankiron would of course never be made. However, these ideas, if they are in fact true, would become parts of the Godzilla series in the 1990s. And while Biolante wound up being the final released product they came out with in 1989, this whole concept is so fascinating for me to look back at because it just shows you how different things could have been, especially 
especially for Godzilla 2 or whatever you want to call the second movie in the Heisei series back in the day. There is another project that I'll get to eventually in regards to this whole contest, and there's actually a lot of wild ideas they never used, but Godzilla vs. Ankiron is something that just... It shocked me. I was like, wow, I've never heard of that before. How come nobody talks about it? So the truth about what happened to Godzilla vs. Ankiron seems to be that it was cut up into pieces and redistributed into some other Godzilla movies from the Heisei series, while the title monster itself never got used. Even Anguirus didn't make an appearance in the Heisei series, so I guess that isn't too hard to believe, but yeah guys, what a weird piece of history. With that being said, I would love to hear some comments from you guys down below. Like, what do you think Anki run would have looked like had it been made in the Heisei series. And how do you feel about the way Guy Tucker was allegedly like dealt with Toho? I mean, they, he turned in the script for Godzilla 2. They chop it up into little pieces and just redistribute it in the other movies. I guess, you know, that's kind of how it works if it's a contest winner. But Biolante wound up coming out. We never got to see this psychic Armadon-ish animal. We did get to see all the other like nuclear red hot Godzilla stuff though. And because Godzilla vs. Destroya is such a popular movie, it's wild to even think about. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, let me know all about them guys in the comments down below. Let me tell you something, brother. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you can be updated when I put out new videos. God bless you all. Christ is king. I hope you all enjoyed your time. And as always, take it easy.